Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night worship service. We're glad you could join us tonight. Uh, that little uh, snafu there is because this coming Sunday morning, we're going to start our outdoor worship service uh, here at the church uh, at 10 a.m. And uh, we will be also streaming online uh, through Facebook. So if you are not comfortable coming to the church outdoors, uh, you're certainly welcome to join us through Facebook and uh, we'll continue to stream live as well. Uh, if you are wanting to attend, we ask that you be here between 9.15 and 9.45 a.m. That it gives you time to get parked. Uh, we're going to have you temperature checked at our welcome table and seated in your chair. We ask that you bring your own chair and we'll be out front at in the parking lot. Um, if uh, Also, make sure you wear your mask. So we will also be social distancing and we, uh, if the weather is not cooperating and uh, we will find that out uh, early in the morning we'll let you know at 8 15 a.m uh, through facebook so um, that's what we're going to plan we don't know what the weather will be like but we will let you know ahead of time and then you can just watch us online uh, streaming as always so uh, we will also after the service at 11 15 continue our virtual fellowship hall from 11 15 to 12 p.m again that you can find on our Facebook page, our church's website. Uh, the event will be on this church uh, Facebook page. On our website, you'll see Virtual Fellowship Hall uh, directly be below the 10 a.m. Uh, streaming, as well as you can also find it on our calendar. And even on the calendar, you'll also see more information regarding the outdoor worship service. So we're really excited about the fact that we're able to bring forth worship. Have you come here to the church? Be around us, but be safe in doing so to worship God together as a family on God's property. So hopefully we'll get to see you this Sunday morning uh, bright and early. Be here again, 915 to 945. We've got to get you checked in and get you uh, a place out in the parking lot. And remember, bring your chair, bring your mask, and bring your spirit. We always love to hear that awesome, beautiful spirit of each and every one of you. So other than that, I, if you have any questions regarding this, you can certainly uh, contact me through our website, uh, through email, or you can contact Pastor Jamie as well. So if you have any questions, or you can call the church, certainly, or our cell phones. So we're happy to answer any questions or concerns that you may have related to that. But we're really excited. We hope and pray that God is, I, we know God is leading us in this. We just pray that God gives us uh, an opportunity to be together but be safe in the process as well. Let us pray. Loving God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for bringing us here this night, God. We ask you to be with everyone who is watching or listening tonight, Lord. Let your spirit touch them and revive them and refresh them, Lord. We thank you, God, for the opportunity that we have through this online streaming, that we have the opportunity to worship you and worship with one another safely. We thank you for that now, Lord. I ask the anointing of your spirit upon this service this night. Let your spirit flow through each and every one of us, God, and touch the hearts, the minds, and the souls of everyone who's with us this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, everyone. Yes, we are a little bit excited about Sunday morning. So uh, uh, Pastor Joyce and I, along with Pastor Tosh, Deacon Don, Amber, and Vicki, have all been uh, working hard so we can... Uh, have Sunday Sunday happen with all of our volunteers and things too. So we're really looking forward to it. In the meantime, since it has been a long couple of days, this is a moment for us to just sit back and relax and get refreshed, get restored, get renewed, um, so we can make it through to the end of the week. Right? It's 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 hump day. So um, everyone, just just take a moment and just get plugged into the Holy Spirit through music and through a sermon and just recharge your battery for the next couple of days until we can come and worship again together, uh, whether it's here on our property or virtually as we always had been. So are you ready, Pastor Tosh? Ready. All right. <laughs> I don't know why I said it that way. She is ready. <laughs> she is ready. <laughs> Here's your chord. Your love is two, three, four. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Makes 
to say your love makes me sing or smile it really does
right, beautiful, excellent. Songs are apropos for the sermon as always, always, always. Jesus is the one that brings us salvation, forgiveness, reconciliation back to God. It's God's forgiveness that heals us, restores us, and bring us, brings us all back to a place of wholeness and a place of relief and all those other blessings that come with forgiveness. And that's essentially the message I have for us tonight as well because as Jesus was teaching throughout his ministry, so very often he uh, bumped up against the Pharisees who really were always looking to point fingers and find fault with others and to just cause all kinds of disruption and just they were so about punishment as opposed to grace. They were more cons concerned about peep the rules that they made up versus the commandments that God made about love and mercy and, and tenderness and forgiveness because God is a forgiving God. So the Pharisees who were religious leaders at the time really did not understand Jesus or his ministry. And each and every time Jesus was with people, all kinds of people, especially people who were imperfect, people who had sinned, people who had fallen short, people who just couldn't seem to get their act together, they were the ones that Jesus ministered to. And he taught the disciples all the time about God's mercy, grace, and forgiveness. That was re repetitive throughout his ministry. And we see each and every time, and he was confronted by the Pharisees uh, about forgiveness of sins and so forth, Jesus would always, always side on the side of forgiveness because he knew he was that's what he came for. He came to bring people back into relationship with God and to make our relationships with one another uh, as a result also beneficial and loving and merciful, gracious and forgiving. So in chapter uh, in, in Matthew chapter 5, 18, uh, Jesus had just been talking about how to help someone who falls short, someone who does something wrong to you or to, or to someone else. And he speaks about that, and he, he talks about correcting the person, but also kind of teaching them, helping them find the thing that they have done wrong to you or to someone, and to not so much blame or try to get even with them, but find a way to bring them back into understanding that the error of their ways, but still keeping them intact spiritually still treating them with mercy and grace. And he talks about that, and he teaches how to go about going just to the person one-on-one -on -one and finding a way to make amends, if at all possible, and help the person understand maybe what they had done wrong. And not for punishment, but to reconcile the relationship so that that person could essentially understand that even though they have done you wrong or someone wrong, that they could be forgiven. And he, and he speaks of that in uh, verse, the verses uh, 18 and fifth, verses 15. But I'm going to jump down because right after this, Peter comes to Jesus. And I'm going to begin at verse 21. And it says, Peter came to him and asked, after hearing this, Lord, how many times should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, Jesus replied. 70 times 7. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accountant accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of the debtors was brought in who owed him $1 million. He couldn't pay. So the king ordered that his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. No mercy there, right? You're going to pay up, buddy. But the man fell down before the king and begged him, Sir, be patient with me, and I will pay it. I'll pay it all. Then the king was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. A million dollars. Now think about that in terms of Maybe sin, right? When we think about ourselves, the sins we've committed, the things we've done wrong, if you could equate it to money, some of us that are older and some of us that were, hate to say it, better at sinning than others, we might accumulate a million, 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 zillion 
sins and debts that we owe God, right, or owe the king. And certainly we should repay that, right? That's what, what is taught here, at least in this example, first part of it. But when we ask for forgiveness, we say, listen, I, I'm going to repay it. I'll do whatever I can. What we find at the heart of this king is that he is filled with pity, compassion. He's filled with mercy. He's filled with grace. And so he releases the person and forgives the debt. A million, a million dollars worth of debt, a million sins were forgiven. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Just give me a few days. I'll get the money, please. Be patient, and I will pay it he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and jailed until the debt could be paid in full. Does that make any sense to you when you think about it? I mean, do people do things like that where they've been forgiven a million dollars and they learn their lesson about how good it feels to be forgiven? Do they go and then in turn go to somebody else who hasn't sinned all that much against them? and won't forgive them? Imagine people doing that. I don't know any people that do things like that. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him what had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, you evil servant, I forgave you the tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison until he paid every penny. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters in your heart. Wow. You know, the thing of it is, if we're given forgiveness, we're expected by God and what Jesus is teaching here we're expected by God because of God's forgiveness. If God shows us mercy, we're to show mercy to others. We don't get to choose, although we can, because we have free will. Ultimately, we're going to stand before God, and God's going to ask the question, I forgave you all these millions and zillions and bazillions of sins that you committed. I gave my life for you and you couldn't forgive that person for the small things they had done to you? So he uses this example. It's a pretty, pretty sharp one. It's pretty stark, but it's an important lesson because there's a certain amount of hypocrisy here that we see from this one person who has lots of debt, lots of sins, who's been forgiven, and they won't forgive somebody else. And that's why Jesus is making the emphatic command here that as we forgive, we'll be forgiven. And remember, he also taught that in the book of Luke, that uh, as we give, it comes back to us. And he also, also is referring to not just money, but as we give forgiveness, we'll give it back to us. So the measure we use, we get back. That's not an easy thing to hear sometimes, because those of us that love forgiveness and want to be forgiven, and we we love God because of that, we have to do the exact same thing in return. And back to Peter. You know, Peter, when he came up to Jesus and he said, how often should I forgive someone? Seven times? See, Peter knew that in the Old Testament it was really three times. That's what really God would often do. In the book of Amos, we see that God would forgive the Israelites three times. And they took that out of context that, and, and Peter's thinking, okay, well, that was three times. I'm going to overachieve. I'm going to say seven times. So he's trying to, you know, he's asking Jesus this question. I don't know if he really wants the answer because what does Jesus say? Seventy times seven. It's not, a, it's not a spiritual number except for the fact that seven is a complete number. So that means we have to completely forgive someone, meaning you can't think about it later and get upset again and unforgive them. You can't uh, remind yourself of what they did over and over or say to someone, I forgive them, but I won't forget about it. 
that's not complete. That's where the seven fits in because seven is a spiritual number of total completeness and wholeness. So when we're called to forgive, it means we forgive as though what they had done to us never even happened. So even if it comes to mind, and this is where Jesus is also speaking about it, if it comes to mind or they do it again and again, uh, you know, an unlimited amount of times, and they come back and they ask for forgiveness, we are to forgive them because that's exactly how God forgives us. That's, that's also what's in this story as well. We can go millions of times, not that I'm suggesting it. I'm not asking you to be overachievers when it comes to doing those things wrong. But what I am saying is God's forgiveness is unlimited. And in turn, if we're going to be like God, it also has to be that we are give unlimited, unlimited, no limit to. We don't count how many times we forgive a person. You know, it's not as though you have a little tally sheet. And if you've been with uh, friends or family members, uh, spouse, uh, church members, whoever, you know, if you're with another person, more than likely you're going to mess up from time to time and hurt each other unintentionally, right? And the longer you're with someone, uh, it's going to add up maybe. And if you're not careful, uh, if people pile those things up and they start to count, well, that's 7, 8, 9, 10. Wait till I get to 70 times 7. That's 490 times. And as soon as I get to that 490 time, boom, there they go. That's not what Jesus is, is referring to here. It's not, it's not that mathematical. What he's really saying is as many times as that person comes back to you and asks for forgiveness, wants to change, you are to forgive them, and you can forgive them completely, 100% of it, because that's the way God is with us. You know, God says in, in the Old Testament as well as in the New, I take your sins as far as the east is from the west. I remember them no more. Just imagine if God kept score and kept count on yours and my sins. We, we could never repay. We could never... And that's the thing, you can't give back and try to do over and over and over again to repay God. He's not asking to be repaid, even though this king uh, should have been repaid, right, because of the millions of dollars he was owed in debt. But, you know, God doesn't care how many times it is that we sin. He cares that we repent. He cares that we, our heart, notice it says we also want to forgive a person in our heart in our mind, in our soul. Uh, we don't keep record of wrongs. That's not the way love operates. So um, if you're a perpetual person that tends to make mistakes and you're imperfect, just go back to God and ask God to help you change what that is that you're doing repetitively. And God will forgive you. And you also have to remind yourself that you've been forgiven. You don't have to worry about paying God back and trying to do good works and trying to you know, make up for what you've done wrong. Jesus paid the price on the cross. All of our debts have been paid in full with his life, and he paid a ransom. And so that, that aspect of that also hopefully causes you and me and us to feel that, that sense of freeness that we have from being forgiven, forgiven the love that we feel from God because of that, the, the sense of being, you know, just set free from guilt or, or we don't have to think about it over and over ourselves either as when we make a mistake. When God forgives us, it's done and over with God. He moves on and we need to move on too and just begin again to change and to grow. And that's where the Holy Spirit can help us with that. But for all the people in all of our lives that you know, they make mistakes. If you're around other human beings, nobody's perfect. Most likely, you're going to find some time, well, maybe a few of us are. But, may, but, <laughs> but, you know, the longer you're in a relationship with anybody, somebody's going to have to forgive. And most likely, if you're like me, I'm usually the one asking for forgiveness uh, because of my, my, in, my humanness. Um, and I just happen to be blessed that God, I know, forgives me. And I know that the people that are godly will also forgive me as well. We want to continue to be in relationship with one another. But I also want to, you know, do for others the way God has done for me. If God's forgiven me, 
God's forgiven you, which of course we know he has. It's only right that we forgive others. There's nothing, nothing worse than being forgiven for a lot of things. And uh, we keep score on other people as though, you know, we have to hold that against them and hold that grudge against them. That's certainly not God's way. So the Bible teaches us through, through who Christ is that each and every one of us, just like Peter, who denied Christ three times, he was forgiven those three times, but I'm sure there were other times in between his relationship with Jesus. We might think of those three remarkable, awful times, but there's a lot of other times when Peter fell short and didn't always understand. Uh, and also, Jesus forgave him every single time. And guess what Jesus also did? He also used him for a great ministry in the future. So how many times do we forgive? As many times as the person comes and asks for forgiveness, as many times as we think about how much we've been forgiven, we are also going to offer that same amount, a million, bazillion, quadrillion <laughs> pizzas of forgiveness where we never keep score. See, actually, if you didn't count it, you wouldn't know how many times somebody sinned against you. That's exactly it as well. So we're not here to keep score about that. What we're here to look for is the good in other people, we're here to see how many ways we love someone and how many ways we can show grace, mercy, and forgiveness to others so that we truly can be called the children of the Most High God. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you so much, so much for your forgiveness. We love you so much because you loved us and gave us a way that we could be set free. We could no longer have to be in shame or guilt we can be free people, and we can be people that you help change and grow. Lord, we don't want to continue to make those same mistakes over and over. So we ask you, Lord, that you would help us also change because that's what repentance is. So we ask you, God, also to help us change the way we treat others. Help us change the way we forgive others or perhaps don't forgive others. Help us, Lord, to forgive just the way you do, God, never counting how many times but counting them as a person that you love, that you want a relationship with you, Lord, and you continue to forgive and give mercy and grace to us all each and every day. So help us also, Lord, be the kind of people that show that same mercy and grace and forgiveness to everyone we know. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope and pray that you continue to move forward with your walk with God. Continue to follow and be just like Jesus and know that God never keeps score of what you've ever done wrong, and we don't either. So remember, you're always welcome in the family of God. Just continue to just give that same kind of grace and mercy and forgiveness to others. We'll see you again tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, and hopefully we'll see you Sunday morning at 10 a.m. here at the church. God bless you. We love you. Virtual hug.